Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for my top 10 comic books of the week. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups Station, and right now I'm about to deliver my top 10 comic books of the week for January 20th, 2021. It is not a spec list, just a list of my 10 absolute favorite comic books, whether story, art, or the combination of both, hopefully. Let's get right into it with number 10, Stillwater, number five, from Image Comics. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. In fact, I've said this before, and I'll say this again before, and I'll say it again. Um, Stillwater number five was absolutely amazing. What Chip Zdarsky can do with building up this world, building up the character uh, of this town as a whole and as, a, uh, as individuals, it is absolutely magnificent to me. The fact that we have so far, aside from the first issue, really had uh, four issues following of exposition. And the fact that it is still incredibly thrilling, dramatic, mysterious, and changing my perspectives on what this story is and how far it's going to reach. That is a major compliment to writer Chip Zdarsky, um, artist Ramon K. Perez, because even though the book could be very static plot-wise, it is very dynamic artistically. And you add in Mike Spicer's coloring, Stillwater has been one of the best books. It's about a town in which nobody dies, and now everything's hitting ahead, and they got a new member introduced. It was a, a child. So, like, think about this. In this town, children don't grow up. Nobody ages. Nobody dies. That's just how it is, but they're very secretive about it. And now, because of a, an outsider but former insider coming back into the, the whole game, it throws everything in commotion, and we are just building up. We got one more issue in arc one, and it's all set up for an explosive series that's going to be a clash of personalities, and I'm excited. At number 10, Stillwater number five. At number nine, we have Scumbag, the Scumbag number four from Image Comics. It is number four, right? Yes, it is. This book is so much freaking fun. Fun. It's written by Rick Remender. This one's got artwork by Roland Boshi, a Marino Dinicio on the uh, coloring. This book is so much fun. Each issue is done by a different artist, but so far, none of the clash of styles has really, to me, affected the pace and the tone and the flow of this book. Rick Remender is doing something incredibly gratuitous, incredibly ridiculous, incredibly funny, and so much just explosive boisterousness that is so much just wildness and i'm just eating it up it's about a dude who's the he's the scumbag he's the worst in the world right and somehow he has been gifted accidentally with these superpowers in fact the secret agencies literally needs him the scumbag of the world to come in and save the day and of course all he wants to do is get laid be uh very crude and rude and do a lot of drugs and obviously this issue the cover promises an orgy there is a whole lot of orgy in here but it's so much fun it is very gratuitous very graphic not for everybody but if you're not offended easily this is definitely a comic book for you it's a great classic hero's journey um but with a twist on it so number nine the scumbag number four from image at number eight, King in Black, number three from Marvel Comics. I've been enjoying this book. This is how you do an event comic book main series, not how you do the tie-ins. I'm, I'm done with the tie-ins. Unless it's a new number one, I think I'm done. Um, and I'm not faulting the tie-ins for not being essential. That's There's nothing bad about that, but... Marvel is just overall not really working for me right now. But one thing that is working for me is Donny Cates. And this is basically the conclusion of his Venom run because we have found out that after King and Black wraps up, we will have Venom 200. And that will, in fact, be Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's last issue of Venom. And Cates clarified that that's, yes, that's in the Venom forever. Now, I have my own thoughts on that. We'll elaborate that more probably in the, uh, the second half of the show. Um, and definitely on the live streams this weekend. But King and Black is really fun because it's got loud, um, boisterous artwork that's explosive. It's It leaps off the page. You saw that page with with uh, Wolverine, Dylan, and Spider-Man. Ryan Stegman's doing a great job. I feel like the artwork in issue three starts feeling a bit rushed. 
um, a bit sloppy at times, but not overly so and not really distractingly. Um, but Donnie Cates is doing a great job. Right now, it feels like a lot's happening quick. We're building up to it. But King of Black number three is really awesome. It really centers on a Thor and Null story. Uh, Thor, Null versus Thor, I should say. And I had a lot of fun with it. So issue um, number eight on the top ten. King in Black, number three, from Marvel Comics. Number seven, Once in Future, number 15, from Boom Studios. Y'all, Karen Gillan's doing such a great job. Once in Future is a story about what if King Arthur came back, but what if he wasn't a good dude? What if he was actually kind of a deep bag, a little bit of a racist, and just an evil, like, zombie monster type thing? And the way that Gillan has taken the invertedness of that common knowledge of the uh, Arthurian legend, the Camelot stuff, and is in and, and, and caused an inversion to happen on it and, and doing something different with it, but then adding in all these other mythologies and all these other legends and folk tales. Um, so much fun. This is a little bit of a lull issue, so it's not quite as explosive as some of the previous ones, but Dan Mora and colorist Hammer Bond Villain are by far doing some of the absolute best comic book artwork on page right now, once in future at number seven, that's issue number 15. At number six, we have Deceased, Dead Planet. Number seven, this is the final issue of this series by Tom Taylor and Trevor Herzine. I'm having a lot of fun with this. Deceased is basically an alternate reality Elseworlds what if type story. It's a little bit like DC's version of Marvel Zombies, but this has transcended that so far above and beyond since the first issue of the initial series. The artwork is great. The human emotion, the drama, it's got weight to it. It feels, even though it's a what if Elseworlds type story, it feels like it's got meaning. It feels like it's got gravity behind it. Like it's meaningful. And Tom Taylor alone is doing, along with the art team, is doing some of the absolute best legacy character work I've seen in like 10 plus years. Deceased, Dead Planet. This is the final issue of this series. It may be the final issues of Deceased, period. I hope not because there's a lot to explore, a lot of great character work, and some really badass Constantine bits. At number six, we have Deceased, Dead Planet, Number seven. At number five, now we're in the top five. At number five, we have Abbott, 1973, issue number one. This is from Boom Studios, written by Saladin Ahmed, with artwork by Sammy Cavella, coloring by Mattia Iacono, and lettering by Jim Campbell. Now, one of the only problems I had with this book was that they changed the colorist. Now, this is a sequel to a series called Abbott that came out uh, two or three years ago. I loved it, thought it was great. But Jason Wordy is not here coloring this, so I didn't quite like the art as much. But I still love Sammy Cavella's composition, his line work, his dedication to panel design and flow. Saladin Ahmed has created a really great story of, uh, here. It's about a, uh, a crime journalist in Detroit in the early 70s, 73 for this one. There's a supernatural lean to the story, but it's also just about the grit and grime of Detroit in the 70s. It's about the black community and, 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 and what they had to go through, especially as Detroit was kind of, kind of meandering around and collapsing within itself. So it's got all of that. Plus it's got this supernatural twist to the story that I absolutely love. I love the artwork. I love the characterizations. Abbott is a great character. I'm excited to see this back. If you've never read the original, you can jump right in here because it lets you know straight up in the first couple pages, what exactly happened in the original series and then it moves on rather quickly and it doesn't drop a beat. But I would highly recommend that you check out the original and this one. And even though I did say that I didn't like that Wordy didn't come back as the colorist, the coloring's not bad, just a little bit different, a little less texturized, except for in certain parts where it was really, really crazy. Anyway, number five was Abbott 1973 from Boom Studios. At number four, we have Barb Alien, Red Planet from the World of Black Hammer. This one is written by Jeff Lemire and Tate Romball with artwork by Gabriel Hernandez Walta and Jordi Belair. Aditya Bidikar on the lettering. This is great. It's set in the world of Black Hammer, but even if you've never read Black Hammer, you can totally get into the story and understand what it's talking about. Um, this is about Barb Alien. He's one of the characters from Black Hammer. He's basically a Martian Manhunter, but think of Martian Manhunter escaping um, a restrictive society because he is, in fact, a homosexual. And so now he comes to Earth in the 80s during the AIDS epidemic, and he doesn't find much more tolerance or much more care. So the way that this book handles that 
is in a non-preachy way, in a very cool way that actually makes you feel. This book makes me feel um, in certain scenes the way that Rent does. This book was really cool. Talking about the struggle and the journey of, of the LGBTQ plus community in the 80s in America during the AIDS epidemic and, and relating it to the idea of the outsider alien on Earth kind of inherent in, uh, in Martian Manhunter's story. And then, yeah, you got great artwork with a grit, with a texture, with a realness um, to it. And you got Aditya Bidikar, the best letter out there. At number four, Barb Alien, Red Planet. Number three from Dark Horse. From the world of Black Hammer. At number three, we've got Rorschach, number four from DC Black Label. No DC Future State books on the top 10 list this week, but we do have some DC Black Label. I am loving the hell out of this book, so I really didn't like it at first. In issue two, I kind of got where they were going with it, and then three was great, and now four takes another twist, another turn, and it's really, really cool. I know a lot of us are tired of seeing DC just constantly play out the idea of just reusing and rehashing the Watchmen. This is something completely different, something really cool. It's got statements to make on comic book creatorship. It's got come up, it's got statements to make on politics, but in a non in your face type way, it basically is dealing with what the effect is that the character Rorschach would have on people um, years, if not decades after it works as a sequel in a way to the, um, HBO series because it is set in that world, but I'm having so much fun. Jorge Fornias, Dave Stewart, amazing artist, great layouts, really doing an homage and tribute to the Watchmen, but still establishing their own visual sense and style. And Tom King, Tom King excels when he gets 12 issues on a character or on a story where he doesn't have too much editorial oversight, right? And then that's at number three was Rorschach number four. At number two is Batman Catwoman number two. I didn't think I was going to love this book near as much because Tom King's Batman run, which let's look, let's be honest. This is the coda. This is the epilogue to what was supposed to happen, I guess, at the end of Tom King's Batman run because it got cut short by like 15 issues or something. So we got a 12 issue series here. However, it's DC Black Label. So it's not forced to fit in continuity, though, of course, nothing really is anymore now post heavy metal um, or death metal. So there you go. But man, is this so good. This is like the best statement on uh, on the the entirety of what King um, was trying to do with with Catwoman on the series, amazing artwork by Clayman Tomomori on the coloring. I love it. It's introducing the phantasm into continuity, even though it, what continuity? It's DC Black Label, so it doesn't really count. So he's able to do whatever he wants to do. But look at that artwork. Look at Phantasm. It's great. It's a story set in three different eras, past, present, and future. It's dealing with this Phantasm story. It's dealing with the future after Batman has died, after having a life married uh, to Selina Catwoman. Um, and now we're dealing with a lot of different intricacies in the plot, in the structure, and I'm having so much fun. Two issues in, I'm loving it. This is some of the best work I've ever seen done from Selena Kyle in years and years. And yes, Rom V's writing Selena right now, but Tom King is doing some amazing stuff here, especially with the futuristic version. So my number two comic of the week was in fact Batman Catwoman, number two from DC Black Label. And my number one is I Breathed a Body, number one, did I show you artwork? Yeah, I did. Um, I breathed a body number one. It's wow. Holy cow. If you like David Lynch, if you like David Cronenberg, if you like Clive Barker, this book is for you. It takes all of those same themes that those creators kind of deal with and the, and the weird surreal way and cerebral nature of those stories that they deal with. And it throws it out into a great idea about what does the social media influencer whole thing have to do with anything? And, and what does it represent about us as a culture? Our fascination with seeing the most heinous things online and how corporations kind of keep that stuff in front of us. I had a lot of fun with this one. It's written by Zach Thompson. The way that he does these really heavy themes and a really surreal and cerebral type story, just like he did in Lonely Receiver, but a completely different type of vibe. But at the same time, dealing with the meshing of 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 biology and technology um dealing with the how important social media and social media figures have become how easy it is for the corporate um ideals to kind of take their their to sink their talents into that and and manipulate and control the populace through it 
It's great. I loved it. It's about a social media influencer who just keeps pushing the envelope further and further. It deals in body horror, fungal horror, um, social horror. Um, I've read issue one and two. Issue two is crazy. I cannot wait till you read issue two. If you read issue one and you were like, I liked it, but it didn't really quite get what was going on. I definitely encourage you to check out issue number two because that's where it absolutely just blows me away. That was my pick of the week. I breathed a body. Number one, this is not going to be for everybody. By the way, Andy McDonald, Triana Farrell, they do an amazing job of providing darkness texture, um, grit, and horror to the page and being sleek and cool. But the basic premise is, what if this big-time social media influencer at some point in the future when technology has become more in, engrossed and enhanced by biology and organics, uh, especially there's there's all kinds of like mushroom type stuff that we're like barely even getting into um, in these first couple issues. Um, but what if he does the most heinous, terrible, gross, unforgivable thing you can think of? And then how does how how does the corporation continue on with that. I loved this book. It was definitely my pick of the week. So let's run through the top 10 real quick. Again, at number 10, I had Stillwater, number five. At number nine, I had The Scumbag, number four. At number eight, I had King in Black, number three. Number seven, I have Once in Future, number 15. Number six, I have Deceased, Dead Planet, number seven. At number five, Abbott, 1973, number one. At number four, Barb Alien, Red Planet, number three, number three. And at number three, I got Rorschach, number four. Number two, Batman Catwoman, number two. And at number one, the pick of the week was I Breathed a Body, number one. By the way, I'm still awaiting my Brett Hess exclusive um, cover. So I'm very, very excited. Look, everybody, Jim Mintz here and ready. He says, who's tonight's guest? That's right, tonight's guest is Jim Mint from Jim Mint Collectibles. That was my top 10. We're going to take a quick break real quick. And when we come back at the top of the hour, y'all, 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 Jim Mint's in the house. And we're going to be talking about this week's brand new comics and maybe a little bit about Donnie Cates and all that jazz. We'll be right back, y'all.